All right, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. This one's going to be a pretty fun one, but um, it does involve some programming. So if you know C++ or C, you should be good to go on this. You might still need to learn some of these Windows proprietary types because they're kind of a pain. Um, in other words, this is essentially a C program, but you have to know all these like macros. Like you can see here, that's an unsigned long which is called a D word, W char, star, and some of these things are proprietary to the uh, actual hooking engine. But anyway, so to what we're gonna do here, so as you probably know, or you've probably heard, um, malware and um, even like game hacking and actually antivirus and uh, security software, it all does something called hooking. and um, Basically, what a hook is, to keep it really simple, is when a program is going to call a function, for example, let's say the function to open a file or to display a message box or something like that, um, what it does is it has to use these libraries that are given to it by these pound include statements. So like Windows.h has a whole bunch of um, Windows functionality. So let's say you're a C++ programmer and you're programming for Windows and you need to create like a, a message box or a new window or something. So all the functions to do that are going to be in Windows.h or sometimes other header files, right? Well, when the program calls into that um, function provided by the operating system's interface or a DLL file basically, that's how it gets the functionality. Now, what a hook is, is you go basically to the very top of the function in the DLL file, and you inject some code up there. And that code that you're injecting into the beginning of the function occurs before the function does anything. And what it says is, hey, leave the function and go to somewhere else that I'm telling you to go. So you're transferring program execution from the actual operating system function to your own function. And what that does is it allows you to, to monitor every time those operating system functions are called, and it also allows you to modify the functionality when the operating system functions are called. And so um, why, would, why would you want to do this? So basically, if you're an antivirus company, you want to monitor all the activity on the computer, right? You want to monitor what programs are doing. You want to monitor when programs are started, when they're when they're um, when they're writing files to the disk. So what you'll do is you'll you'll monitor or hook all these different functions that involve files being written to the disk, processes being created, etc. And you'll want you want to do the same thing too if you're malware, because what you can do is you can inject malicious code and functionality into other programs and try to hide that way, right? And it's actually really sketchy because it's not easy to detect at when, it, when an injection uh, of a hook like this has happened. I mean, it is kind of for an analyst, but for a typical user, you're not really going to see anything. And so um, the code to do that in in uh, from scratch is actually kind of complicated. It's, it's not that complicated, but it definitely would take a few hours of study and messing with if it was your first time. And what I did is I found a whole bunch of these uh, import address table uh, hooking tutorials and stuff. So for example, uh, let's see, let me start up the browser here so I can show you what I'm talking about. Running a bunch of stuff, so it might be a little bit of a delay. Okay, so, so let's say you go to google.com and you say, uh, IAT hook tutorial or yet or YouTube there's like a billion of these however the vast majority of them are all for 32-bit programs or a 32-bit operating system and that can be kind of a pain because Windows 10 Windows 8 Windows 7 they're all 64-bit operating systems and a lot of these DLL files and functions that you want to hook are actually 64-bit so I found this sweet library out of nowhere um, it's called easy hook uh, and this is the page for it. I'm going to put it in the description, but um, it's pretty. It is actually pretty easy 
in comparison to other libraries. So I'm using Easy Hook, and you can just you can use NuGet Packet Manager on uh, Visual Studio, and you can go into where is it? So you can go NuGet Packet Manager manage and then you could just type in easy hook and browse and then you'll see it here so easy hook actually has a c-sharp library but i don't really like managed languages that much so i chose to do the native one and i find the native one to be easier and more straightforward and you will too if you're already a c or c plus plus programmer if you're a c-sharp programmer then you might want to use the uh, managed library but that's not what we're going to cover so you install this into your uh project and then you can get going Okay, so let me close that out right now, and then I'm going to show you um, the one I just created, actually. So basically what I did here is I wanted to know whenever the program Notepad calls the function ntCreateFile, which is an ntDLL, it's a native function. So it's a very, it's the lowest level of a user mode function for um, doing any kind of file input output stuff. So if you can Google it, NT create file. I think it's officially undocumented, but um, Microsoft does provide a little bit of info about it. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different uh, parameters and you can go and check this out on your own time basically. So essentially this function gets called a lot, very, 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 very often. So it's also a good function to test and see if your hook works. And again, this is all 64-bit, so this was like a milestone because I had never hooked a 64-bit uh, function before. This is pretty cool. So um, the way this works is you have your injector and then you have your actual hook code. So the injector is the program responsible for actually going into the target process, which is in this case Notepad, and injecting this jump into the um, NT create file function, which is loaded over there. And then the, the notepad hook is a DLL file with one more function. And what this function does is this is the function responsible for the, the actual activity that I want to occur when NT create file is hooked. And so you can see here that I created a function called NT create file hook, but the function NT create file hook looks a lot like NT create file, right? It has all the same arguments that we just saw. And the reason why is because when you hook a function, you need to first, you need to uh, first actually divert to another function. So I'm diverting to NT create file hook, but you still need all those parameters passed in because eventually, well, you don't, you don't need to, but eventually you're going to want to call the original function so that you don't disrupt the functionality of the program and cause it to crash. So basically what we're doing here is we're sandwiching. We're saying, okay, we're going to pretend like we are an NT create file. We're going to take all these parameters in here or these arguments, and then we're going to do our own thing for a while, which in this case I'm creating a, a message box. And then eventually we're going to go ahead and call the real NT create file and then pass the results of that to the program. So that way the program has no idea what's going on and it doesn't crash and uh, functionality just kind of keeps going in a streamlined fashion. So again, we're sandwiching, we're, we're, we're taking in the same arguments into our custom function and we are doing some functionality that is not in NT create file and then we're eventually doing the actual NT create file. And so that's what this uh, actual notepad hook CPP file is. And this is our uh, functionality that we have. And some of this stuff is sort of boilerplate that I got from their little tutorial on there. But I, I was in a rush, so I needed to just test this thing out and see if it worked and all that stuff. And so, for example, the C out stuff is not going to happen because we don't have a console box. So I could just remove that stuff. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration here, right? So one thing that really helps to have open, which you can't see, but I'm going to show you real quick, is uh, Process Explorer from SysInternals. Because what we're going to do is the way this works is we are going to start this thing called Notepad Injector. So first we start up Notepad, and we have a blank Notepad file here, or uh, program here, right? 
So remember, it's 64-bit, and then we're going to hit Control F5 on Notepad Injector. We're going to start Notepad Injector. Now we need to get the process ID of Notepad, this instance of Notepad here that we want to inject, right? So we need to go back into Process Explorer, and we need to find Notepad. Okay, so Notepad, Notepad is right here. You can see that it was actually spawned by explorer.exec in this case. So what we need here is 18428. Now check this out. Get ready. So I'm going to do 184228 here. And now this is when I hit enter, we're going to use this library and we're going to inject a hook into the NT create file uh, function call within Notepad. So you can see that it said eject accessory. Now check this out. So when I go over here and I hit open, it's going to go ahead and call NT create file, and you're going to see a, a, a window pop up. See, boom, hello there. And it's going to pop up a lot because it gets called a billion times. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the process so I don't go crazy here. Um, I'm just going to kill it. But how crazy is that, though? So we literally just went in and modified Notepad. And I mean, this is... This is Windows 10, this is fully updated, um, and I mean, granted, I don't have all these different user accounts or anything, but as you can see, there's really no indicator that that even really happened other than the fact that I displayed a message box. So what's crazy is um, that code will actually stay injected in there unless I tell it to pull out, which I didn't in this program. So for example, we could even close our, um, we could close this injector, and if we still had Notepad open, it would still be there. The uh, hook would still be installed. So there would really be no detectable way to see that the hook was there easily for a user. For example, if you were to go into your Process Explorer, you would just see Notepad there. And um, there would be some basically you know, malicious or arbitrary code injected in Notepad. And you wouldn't see what even put it there. So that's a technique viruses use, antivirus uses as well. But it's really cool because let's say you want to know when a program is calling a specific function, like I said, like create file or changing the registry or something. Or you want to make the screen change colors when a program does a particular activity. Well, you can use a, a hook like this to do that. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. Um, I'll put some links in the description for info on this so you could do your own. But um, I just thought it was a really cool um, thing to demo because it's something that people talk about a lot, but it's not really, there's not a lot of information about it, especially for 64-bit. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know if you have any questions in the comments.